2022. My name is Itzel Vilches. I'm the VA artist for 2022 for Cultivarte. I'm a printmaker and I'm also an animator. Uh, and occasionally I do a mural or two. Um, but I make work about my journey through like living in the border, um, having lived on both sides of, you know, the Mexican American side and then feeling that sort of very distant cultural um, break despite being so close to you know, you know either country um, and the irony of that um, I tried to touch on issues of identity and our incredible adaptability as border people um, and so I'm really excited to have Celeste here with us uh, to talk a little bit more about our work. Celeste de Luna um, I'm living in San Antonio Texas I'm originally from the Rio Grande Valley and I'm excited to be here today thank you for having me. I have my first question for you because I always like to ask every printmaker, what drew you to printmaking? Um, is there like, I know you were a painter before. And so how did you pivot into another like entirely different medium? I was doing, I was painting as a graduate student and, um, and I still do a little painting here and there for myself, um, just as a part of my process and, you know, things like that. Uh, but I was so, tied up in my paintings like I just couldn't like it they would freeze me up a lot I think like mm -hmm. they were so precious to me um and uh when I learned a little bit of printmaking as a graduate student I, and I didn't really get into it as a as a graduate I just did like touched on it like somebody threw some line no at me and was like here try this right mm. and I did and I, I enjoyed it like I just kind of like learned a little bit about it and I really enjoyed it and I saw some artists like from the Chicago school like Demio Rodriguez oh you know, yeah Renee Arceo those guys from from the Chicago Midwest printmakers the Chicanos and I was kind of like wow they're doing some kind of cool stuff and so I did a little bit and it wasn't until after I graduated because I continued kind of like painting more when I was still kind of like frozen and painting um, I started doing prints um, I attended a couple of steamroller events I was kind of like challenged to make like these big steamroller prints like in you know shorter amounts of time that uh, made me feel like challenged to get stuff done fast and they made me feel more productive i felt like i really like making the multiples i could like do different things mm -hmm. with them fabric paper I'm just having the one piece and making yeah to make multiple yeah i think that's really so, bad. so i think uh, that's what drew me to printmaking and then, you know and then afterwards you know you find all these the community of printmaking which is a really cool community you know printmakers are always like coming together and sharing ideas i really yeah i really love that too i think with painting you sort of get stuck in this loop of when is it done i can add another layer i can keep painting, I can keep painting. <laughs> can keep and with printmaking you're sort of really made to make these like decisions oh, of like yes. i make a cut here and that is that is what happened. So yeah, yeah, I definitely think that's like, I personally really got into printmaking because of the studio space. I uh -huh. loved that. Like it was, uh, when I went to UTSA, I hadn't still picked uh, a concentration. And mm -hmm. I was like, there's, I know that I have a certain style. I like to be very graphic and like um, bold in my line work, but I don't know where to go. And I hadn't really been introduced to printmaking before. And I remember like, just walking by the studio and it was this massive space with really big windows and like people were wearing their aprons and like everybody looked so cool there's this like mystique, right. <laughs> there's this mystique to yeah, print yeah, yeah. that you're like everybody oh, looks cool <laughs> yeah like y'all look so cool like <laughs> the painting studio is like quiet and like in the printmaking studio they're like blasting music and like it was just that sense of like I want to be part of this community and I want to see what you're doing and then obviously once I like encountered the materials I was like Probably. this yeah. yeah this absolutely translates into the kind of work that I want to make yeah I think the process is also something that's really attractive to me like I being able to like figure out like what does what why does something happen yeah um, and then, all the tools that we have are just like yeah, they're there it's kind of like a mad scientist lab i can relate some of the um like the ink mixing and some of the things we do to cooking i enjoy that that's that's really it's just it just it's great and i love other printmakers and, and their prints yeah i love looking at them and seeing how they do stuff even if i can't do it 
you know, I'm always like, oh, look, at, I always feel this sense of excitement when I look at other people's prints and I'm like, oh my God, like when I go to Frogman's, I'm like, yeah, because it's so versatile. <laughs> and yeah. so it's just like being within the same medium, it is still just an entire world of itself. It's incredibly exciting to see mm-hmm. all the combinations and like techniques that people take. I, I like the idea of like, when I went to go work on, you know, on my art, that it was not, that I wasn't just sitting down. It's a much more dynamic process, I think, because it's like rooted in the trades where you're getting up and you're work. It feels more like work. It does. Uh, And I really uh appreciate that because it makes you like, I feel sore after like, you know, picking up busy, you know, like really, really heavy things. And I feel like with painting, you're just kind of like sitting there and painting and then you stare at it and then you're like, ah, and then it's like, so to me, it was always like, it always like felt depressing. It has a different emotion and like the way ceramics does as well, you know, like all of that has its own, like it really adjusts to like an artist's personality and, and um, how they like to work. Um, but permaking was definitely so punk uh, that, I, <laughs> that I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I, I started painting when I was like, when I, when I was just a kid and I was like the artsy kid, um, painting was usually what was like accessible to me. And so that's really how I started my art journey. Yeah, it's the most, ex- I, I guess it's, you know, more accessible in, in public schools. I can't knock it, drawing, painting, it's, it's always great. My next question is, I know that I've, I've really always admired your work but I want to know what places or what people inspire you um, to, you know, to, to, that have taken you like where you are now, because you are one of the artists for me who like, I see as like, oh, I'm, you know, if I'm growing up and I'm um, sort of developing this, this career as, and I want to, in this identity as a border artist, who do I look to? And, you know, you're one of those people. And so I want to know who, who you look to. I have to say a lot of these Chicana artists, the ones that don't get that recognition until much later, people like Yolanda Lopez, Laura Aguilar, who who I've been more, um, I only discovered fairly recently, you Mm -hmm. know, as far as like really, like I had heard of her and maybe saw a photograph or two, but then I really took a second look and it was like, holy shit. Like sometimes, you know, you don't really, look at an artist and then you look at it and then you really see it and uh, Laura the photographer Laura Aguilar is is one of those recently for me like I'm just like how bold um that she was doing these you know images of herself against the landscape before body positivity before any ideas of like any idea of that that phobia could even be a thing Mm -hmm. that size there could be different body sizes that could be acceptable you know and embrace um, you know and embrace and she's how bold was she (laughs) to do that and and to to I, I was just like wow like I just can't believe that and you know and to find out things about her that like she was rejected from the Gata exhibit and things like that I was like I find those those kinds of things really inspiring other Chicana artists that like are just kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing my work and keep moving it along, you know, and that's all you can really do because uh, there's a lot of art artists out there. There's a lot of art. That's all you can really do. And I mean, the places that I think I like that, I, I like that question. I think places that really inspire me are always these big open spaces that remind me of home, of the valley of, I don't know, there's always that big Texas sky that people talk about, you know, that there's a sense of like feeling really free under it. And I want to find out if there's other places like that in the world. (laughs) Cause I think to myself, well, maybe there's no other place like that, but there has to be right. (laughs) And yeah. And is it tied to, you know, experience and nostalgia or is it tied to like community or is it tied to you know, mm-hmm. finding that is really eventual. So, uh, besides Oaxaca and, and other places in Mexico that I want to to explore, I definitely want to go to Scotland and Germany. Um, oh, I really want to go to Germany. I'm uh, uh, just I I'm like- obsessed with the history and like printmaking and like all of that yeah. is just so enticing. <laughs> but there's that forest, that black forest mm-hmm. in there. 
the one that's part of all the fairy tales like oh my god like that folklore like, yeah where little red riding hoods you know got hijacked by the big bad wolf like i kind of want to see that fairy tale forest for myself yeah. you know and in scotland i kind of like want to see like what do what does that place look like like that big open space like i'm i've seen pictures of like that big open space and yeah you know yeah i um i really wanted to ask this question because i have such a connection to places as well especially when my work for you know the last the last year and so um when where I've been focusing really on like honing down on these topics of like my experience on the border um I feel like before I used to really always make art just about the things that I liked and it, you know it was because I was younger and I really hadn't found like a voice of what I wanted to talk about but now that I've ventured into this part of my life that I want to um, put in my work, places are so important. And I wanna, a lot of the times, like places were the only thing that I had, uh, like memories of a place. And so that was really like visiting those places again, really like power charged uh, my, <laughs> my art journey. But I would love to travel to, um, Germany and places like that I feel like my on my interest falls on more on like the political um because I want to see like you know work about the Berlin Wall and I want to see the like art community there like you know the contemporary uh prank community uh yeah. in places like Germany like I just think that is so cool and fascinating yeah that would um, be amazing yeah and I I see it also because it I I've seen the historical connection that it has to Mexico itself. And I'm just fascinated by all that, like German expressionism, how it traveled, you know, across the seas and then seeing that in the, in the printmaking and how it always has a social impact. Um, I think it's just like one of my favorite topics and something I want, want to explore. There is, there is so many connections, I think, between Texas and Germany. Yeah, um, absolutely. Also. And I think that's also one of my, my curious, like one of the reasons I'm curious about it, mm -hmm. like, will I go there and see something that I recognize? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's uh, incredibly like just building this, having the sensation of like a global community, I think is so important for us artists. And uh, so like, I know that, you know, besides the, besides printmaking, you know, the Frida Kahlo connection, of course. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> the polka connection, right? The the accordion. There's food. There's at least one. Um, I want to say there's at least one food connection, but I can't think of what it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to say there's at least one aspect of of cooking that we. That there's probably several. The beer. <laughs> 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 probably some aspect of te te Texas Mexican cooking that they probably influenced us and I yeah I just it's think incredibly I feel like yeah we we talk about the connections between you know our us being so like South Texas and having really that blend of Tex-Mex but then seeing where those come from like if we're so self I guess they only have two sources but they have so much uh, more yeah it's interesting when when you really think about like we're the roots of all that come from. And so you grew up, you say you have a family in Laredo, correct? Um, and, but you also grew up in Brownsville? In, in um, Harlingen and La Feria. I went to high school in yeah. La Feria. And, um, but we had a house in Harlingen. And then I worked all over the valley. I worked in several public schools and community colleges and UTRGB and South Texas College. I was, mm -hmm. and now I'm here in San Antonio, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I can see behind you that your studio is like a very established place now. Um, <laughs> how long have you been growing it? You know, I, it's been it's been a while. You know, I'm 47 now. Yeah, and so uh, so I and I had been teaching public school almost 15 years, and then I was in higher ed for about four or five years. Um, doing different things, adjuncting, lecturing, things like that. And so I just, you know, I was collecting things over the years, you know what I mean? When we moved here, I knew I was going to get a house. I had a, you know, I, we, I, I was going to get a house that had a, like a little garage and 
renovate it and set yeah. up a place here because I knew that was probably the only way I was going to be able to have a little studio where I could really maintain a practice and be able to take care of my my family like my dad who's mm. uh 90 years old now so, yeah we are a multi <laughs> yeah he's 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 up there uh, we're a multi-generational home that's so good. um my my kids and me and uh my dad and my husband so we are all living here and um and i just knew that like in order to be able to like sustain all that i was gonna have to I wanted a place where I could be able to like instantly access that, yeah. you know, so, and how do you balance that? Like, do you have a set schedule for yourself or do you work by projects and then sort of take time off? And that question, question assumes that I'm balanced. <laughs> <laughs> I know the question is always, how do you achieve balance? And I'm like, yeah, do you think I have any? <laughs> I mean, I, I do the best that I can is oh, really yeah, of course. what I, I would say. I would say that I, plan ahead and uh, I have a to-do list and sometimes I get everything done and sometimes I don't and I try to get some exercise every uh, three or four times a week and then um, and then I try to see my friends or get out of the house once a week so like go out and support your friends to see a show yeah right yeah, yeah. That, that whole thing is also a huge a huge part you know going to galleries and you know talking and being a part of the community is that's really great I have uh somehow managed to create a home studio the pandemic sort of forced me to I never really worked at home before as being like as a younger person like girl I didn't really count but like in school and like my college career I was always working just in the studio but then being sent home for the pandemic was like how do I make a print studio and then like in a week like because I have an assignment due so it was a really hard push uh, and it was uncomfortable for a while, but I think post-grad it's been a lot more like I've set a lot more boundaries about where I work. Like if I have it a separate space from my room, because my room is for resting. I, I agree. That's a good, a, a good practice. If you can, if you can swing it. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I still keep a lot of my materials here. It's just the storage that I have. But um, I think that was one of the most, that's one of the most important parts for me about having a home studio, having those like separated spaces. That's one of the reasons that I mentioned like my age and stuff and like how long it took me to collect the stuff because like, you know, I don't want people to think like, oh yeah, I just got everything, you know, you get everything yeah. overnight and I like, put it all in my cart. <laughs> yeah, like it's not easy. It's, it takes a while. I work, pro you know, work extra, you know, I had a great uh, project I worked on where I got a grant that helped me pay for the press, yeah. you know? Um, so I would use, you know, sales besides my job because, you know, you have a, right, a, we all have our jobs. a job that had to pay like the bills and then, you yeah. know, sales and extra things help pay for this and that. So it's like, you try to make it sustain itself, but you know how it is. It's not like, you know, art can, you know, art doesn't always like sustain your complete life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If it was, you know, this residency gave me a huge push because I feel like for such a large part of, of fine arts graduates after, and like just being completely, you know, depraved of like that studio space and access sort of really like brings us down on like how much we continue and so getting this residency was a huge push for me to not only continue making work but to have a little bit of resources to make you know get myself a press get myself more inks get my, and so it was incredibly motivating to like okay i'm gonna keep doing this i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep the i'm gonna keep the stamina so important yeah those residents residencies like that that um help sustain artists that are just getting out and uh um to do that so like I think right after I graduated and I was looking for place, places to print I mean I did all sorts of things you know I was hand printing I built a little carjack press for a while I was using that I traveled to San Antonio for a while I was using Southwest School would have an independent study program where you could print in their studios for unlimited like if you paid like a certain amount so you could do like take an independent study and then use your print, printing press so I'd go in there on the weekend. Sometimes I'd drive up and, you know, yeah. use 
press. And so, and that also motivated me. I was kind of like, okay, like I need to get my own stuff so I can, you know, print whenever I want because of the resources at the time, they're just like, now there is at least one that I, I know of, um, but <clears throat> there weren't any places where you could print in the Valley, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that Gultivart is doing so something so important of giving us that you know, that helping hand to continue, to continue our practice. And yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for it because I think I would have had to come up with some very creative ways of uh, continuing to, continuing to have access to a studio. This studio looks great. That was awesome. I, I hope to get there one day. <laughs> um, I have a following question. I know that your work, the first time that I encountered your um, work was through the documentary of Tex-Mex on on prime and i remember being fat i was watching with my mom uh and i was like this looks really interesting let's watch it and then i was like oh, there's a printmaker in here oh my god this is so cool <laughs> i was so excited to like i never went how was i going to encounter a printmaker some documentary that i was watching with my mom on like a sunday um mm -hmm. but it was incredibly exciting and i your work really um resonated with me and i remember you talking about our lady of the bridge like um oh, those pieces. Yeah. yeah exactly and those pieces like that and i have a question about what areas of the you know of border culture do you want to highlight um i think because where i was living um at the time in the valley and i think originally the work i was doing at that time we were not talking about there was there was no we weren't talking about those issues at all like now there is a lot of dialogue about it and there's a lot more people making art about it and there's border studies right yeah, that's and so cool. when you know and when I, I had started i was so confused about what was actually happening in my environment and there was a lot less social media also when I had first started making the work right. and things related to that work. So it was just a way for me to kind of like document what was happening and kind of process it. Uh, Cause I really do think like my first language is, you know, visual images, right? Like a lot of artists, like a lot of visual artists. So for me, it was just like a way of trying to understand it. And then people would ask me about the work. And I also think I'm better at uh, processing like what I think with other people mm -hmm. with like conversation uh, yeah like when I make the work like I know I think I that's one way of like processing mm -hmm. but then when people ask me hey Celeste what's this about I'm like at first I'm kind of like oh. you know you kind of think to yourself like you don't really know what you were thinking about, but you do. It's just that it needs to process through a different a different way, right? And so when you are able to talk it out with other people, it, it gets filtered, right? That was one of the ways I was able to kind of like, oh, well, I guess I was thinking about like this anxiety I had when we did these things or, you know, so they were, they're really like, Sometimes people to, uh, tell me, or like, because it's printmaking, and I'm not saying that I, I don't look to protest posters as inspiration, but they'll sometimes say, you know, they'll equate the work to, to protest posters. And, and I'll be like, well, not necessarily the work is more like Otto Historia, right? Mm -hmm. And that they're like, just kind of like talking about what's going on, you know, or what I was thinking about. Sometimes they are protestations about like what is going on. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe not in like that traditional sense. So that's that's why I had, I initially started making the work. I think now because there are a lot of artists who are making more border work, and I think there's more voices that are making, especially more un undocumented voices who are making work about border issues that are really important. Um, I think it's I've kind of. I'm able to focus on other things now that are other border issues that I'm like, okay, this, this is that I'm, that I want to focus on because now we have more voices around the subject because at the time, nobody, I felt like if no, we, we didn't have anybody at the time talking about it. So now I'm like, okay, now I can maybe go to these other things that I'm kind of thinking about or interested in. So right now my more my thing is 
border futurism and the environment and still women's women's embodiment. I, I really think that's important and body horror. Uh, so I think, which I think those two can go hand in, those two go hand in hand for me <laughs> sometimes, a lot of times, you know? So I think those two are the, the things that can be intertwined in, in border issues. Yeah. I think it's a tricky subject because sometimes just because we're making work about the border doesn't mean everything is political because it's a very, you know, polarizing right. area. I I was scared at first to to start making work about Laredo and Nuevo Laredo because I was thinking like, oh God, am I going into this arena that is absolutely like miss like my work is gonna, my words are gonna get misconstrued or like it's gonna be some sort of statement that I don't want it to be. I feel like it's always a big fear and like making work and especially something as bold and you know contrasting as printmaking uh, because <laughs> it's usually taken as like protest, but. I, I, will tell you, I will tell you that your work will get misconstrued no matter what you can't control. <laughs> yeah, it's something we just, you know, I, you got to learn to be okay with because yeah. once the work is out there, it's yeah. no longer yours. It it's, is, it is whatever the world makes it out to be. Well, it's still your work. It's just that people's interpretations are their own and they're entitled to whatever they want to think is, is their however, however wrongheaded, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or right-headed it may be yeah. you know they're entitled to to it and they can you know think whatever they want to they can take it however independent they want. of what my um right. you know, independent my of you know but you're also entitled to put it out into the world without um being unduly harassed I really just tried to focus on I try not to speak for anyone I really am just trying to voice my own journey my own identity struggle my own you know um sort of process because I, I really through all this work I really am just processing years of this disconnect that I have and trying to put pieces back together through each you know through each animation through each print through each you know each piece I think that's really important for me and and like you said also like through like through that journey I also like to touch on things like women's issues and like I think environment is one that I haven't really ventured in but I do really care about and so I definitely feel like in the next you know in the upcoming years it's it's something that I'll focus on because I focus a lot on the river already um as you know I focus already a lot on like um, the architecture of the places that I'm from, um, places like physical spaces, uh, and things like the river and like elements, you know, element of water. Um, and so I think that those are incredibly connected. And it's, if it's, if it's something that needs, you know, defending, uh, mm -hmm. I think my job as an artist is to definitely voice, you know, these issues that matter, the like environmental issues that, uh, really could use, a could use more attention and, resources and all of that i love the futurism lens because you know again like sci-fi horror it's great mm, right yeah and then you know when you when you you're a it doesn't become dated so quickly when you take that angle i think you know because mm. it, it kind of like takes like that third angle like a, a from this other dimension like yeah it doesn't, stand, mm -hmm. it doesn't stand connected to everything else right you can kind of stand alone which is kind of fun and so I enjoy that, that part of it. Um, there's this great podcast I've been listening to called Ologies. Ologies? Ologies and in defense of plants. Okay. So I don't know, like you might like it if you're getting into environmental stuff. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and so what are you, uh, what are you focusing on now? I know you just recently went to fragments. Uh, <laughs> Did you learn any, you know, new techniques or are you trying something different with your work? I mostly go to Frogman's because I love the Frogman's printmaking workshops. Cool. I always feel like I learned something new there. I took this a screen print, printing class uh, from Matt Hobson Walker, who I think does these really amazing layered screen prints. That's cool. And he does, he incorporate, incorporates a lot of digital. So I've been doing more, um, I've been learning new digital stuff, which I had been like fighting really fiercely for the last <laughs> forever, right? <laughs> and so I uh, I got, you know, I had an iPad and I just kind of like, you know, jumped in very 
I'm wading in very slowly and I started with like Procreate and I've always messed around with Photoshop because of, fo of photos. But now that I've, I've been doing the, the Procreate, it's kind of like making me understand other stuff better. And now I'm kind of like, okay, I kind of get it now. I've been learning some stuff and, um, and then I learned some new registration techniques from him as far as screen printing okay. is concerned because I feel like if the registration method I was working with hit with now was just not working for me <laughs> I was like as far as screen printing goes my experience is that the toughest part of printmaking is registration if your registration's not right it's not gonna I work. know it's awful and then when I learned I was like wow I go this is so easy <laughs> <laughs> it's like a moment of joy and also a little bit of anger we've been doing this my whole the whole time I felt like that girl who like found out like on that TikTok where she finds out all you had to do is like break the the yeah. I've been using my teeth for 10 years what the hell yeah. I couldn't believe it I was like seriously okay and so but I always enjoy going to that particular workshop because it's smaller it's more intimate it's yeah. Um, there, it's a really nice group of people, um, and I get to connect with other printmakers and then I get to see a lot of really good prints. And I feel like if that's really important, like to see what good prints look like, you know, yeah, it's incredibly um, inspiring to see what other people are making. And cause they have like an open portfolio night where everybody who's taking the workshop, like puts out their work on a table and you can do it too and then everybody just goes around and looks at each other's work. Huge, like little gallery yeah and it's it's really nice I really like that and uh so super fun nice I uh definitely would love to do a workshop in the future uh I think that is really cool and I love learning in a community setting uh I feel like learning by yourself is just not the same I am like like you said like it's it's crucial for me to talk my ideas out and to like that's a way of processing for me that's really important. That's why the pandemic is really hard for me as well. Like it was just like at, at the peak of my, you know, educational, you know, like journey uh, mm -hmm. in my undergrad that being like in solitude, I just didn't get to bounce that many ideas off of people. So it was, it became really tough. And I noticed that I learned that that's incredibly important for me. It's important. So, yeah, so I think workshops are going to be a lot in my future. It really feels two years of being, you know, not. I mean, that was the first workshop I had been in after the whole pandemic. It's really like a huge part of making is community, and so I, uh, I really like that. That I'm always sort of like guaranteed to be around uh, people and um, interacting <laughs> and learning new stuff, and um, yeah, it's it's incredibly. Um, valuable and so how do you you know do you do these workshops often uh or you know before the pandemic did you was it a practice of yours or how do you keep yourself from you know either like improving or like learning new stuff i do i mean i try to go to frogman's you know once a year if i could mm -hmm. um, every now and again there'll be something in my city that i've gone to there's been a couple things at burning bone Pre burning bones press and he's oh, yeah. now that I live here in, um, in San Antonio, there's definitely a couple of things at uh, flatbed. Yeah, I, I know the master printer, Richie Benya, he's over there. And, uh, I, and I went to, Fro Richie was in one of my classes at Frogman's, one of the first times I went. And so I want to take a class with Richie. I think that would be really fun. And so I feel like now that I'm in a, in a city like San Antonio, it's, there's more like options for things like that. Absolutely. Um, there's, there's opportunities here and there's opportunities close by. So they mm -hmm. become really accessible. I feel like that's a huge change that I saw when I moved here. Um, and I still like love Laredo, but here it was just like, oh my God, I get to have so much more. Uh, and still like with enough of like feeling from like, like it feels like home as well. Um, yeah. So I, re yeah, I really love it. Oh, and I have been to uh, a workshop with Jesse Shaw at Tamiyo. Yeah. Oh yeah. I actually never met Jesse Shaw. I feel like I left Tamiyo exactly like right, right before he got in there. Cause um, being at Tamiyo, I didn't take, I just took my basics there 
and mm-hmm. I only took a couple of like the most minimal art classes I was like I'll just take you know design one um like the most like basic things because I'm saving the big classes for UTSA um mm-hmm. even though I, I took ceramics there and it was a wonderful ceramics program I absolutely loved um the studio and all of that but I remember being in the print studio and not there like there wasn't much and I was like I still don't know what this place is about you know like I didn't I didn't really grasp printmaking while I was there and then yeah. once I left like the printmaking scene started really picking up at TAMU and I was yeah. like what's going on there like I, I was just yes. there I just I missed, missed it, it. Yeah, you missed a gem and Jesse Shaw. He's he's a at American printmaker on Instagram. He's yeah. very, very humble, very, very kind. And he's a good teacher. And so um, I would say that anybody who takes a class with him would. Absolutely. Just more like printmakers. Um, yeah. Laredo. The one that I I found out um, a couple of years into, into UTSA that one of my professors in the printmaking studio is from Laredo, Juan Mora. But yeah, he's got incredible work and also a great teacher. So really great artist to learn from. I'm very grateful that I got to I got to be with him uh, for my undergrad. Yes, he's a very he's a great artist. I just saw I just saw so many of their of their pieces um, at the border as a weapon. But <laughs> it was such it was such great work. I just had never really been in a space in an art, you know, um, in a gallery space full of border art. I just I think it was like a first for me. And so that was really it was oh, really important. That's amazing. I, yeah. And I, you know, I have my, you know, I have my collection of books and this is not even like a, like, this is not even close to what I have downstairs. I have like books on books on books on books on, you know, border or border artist and like Chicano artist and like all of these like textbook size. Cause you know, that's really sort of like, I had to go look for those. I feel like I either, I don't know if it's either the way, like the way I grew up or I didn't really grow up around many artists. I didn't grow up around many like art programs that like I had to go search for the things that I wanted to to find, which, you know, sometimes is the case in in a lot of, um, in a lot, for a lot of people, definitely a gift. And it's definitely like what pushes me to continue as well, because um, I had to sort of decide for myself, like, I want to make work about this, but now being surrounded by more, by more people who do the same, you know, a similar, have a similar approach um, and just similar background. It's, it just feels so, so homey. So like the community is, it's great. I love it here in San Antonio. I do want to go somewhere else for grad school just because I also want to keep experiencing things, but I definitely think I could be back. I think my last question is, do you have any specific goals for this year? Do you have anything that you want to accomplish still? Like, do you want, is, is there anything on your mind that I'm like, hmm, I think I want to, I think I want to go after that. I um, definitely want to create more work this year. I mean, I think I've been making things, mm-hmm. the pandemic and moving and setting up my studio has been kind of like, it's been a lot. And, um, and I, although I've been making things, I also feel like, like maybe the, I want to make a more cohesive body of work. I have a residency coming up at, in Vermont. And oh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, studio center. And so I'll probably take some of that time too, to get some of that done. And I think once I get that done, I'll have some apply for some things I haven't applied for before. I think that's what I want to do. Will you meet Vermont for the residency or will it be um, just like based on the program? Awesome. (laughs) That's super cool. How long is it? It's not super long, but while I'm, it's about a month, I'm going to go prepared to print. Once I'm there, I'll be able to get some printing done. Either a lot of printing or a lot of drawing. So I'm like trying to decide whether what I want to to get accomplished there because sometimes I feel like if I can get like a lot of printing done here Mm -hmm. but like uninterrupted time to draw can sometimes be it's also so (laughs) yeah it's so appreciated (laughs) absolutely oh my god like I feel like the printing process can be broken up you know that's just it's a very repetitive process and so yeah. if you know if you have the plan for it it's just yeah. it's just left to be executed but the actual planning process and having time and space and quiet to do that uh, right so yeah. I'm still do- trying to decide like what are going to be my goals for that you know um yeah. so I've just been do- I've been doing a lot of of drawing now and stuff and I've I've noticed that that's one thing that 
I, I, yeah, that is one of my needs. Yeah. If I could have more balance, I think in studio practice is that for a home studio mm -hmm. is that sometimes I don't get as much like uninterrupted quiet time because you kind of like want nobody to talk to you. You don't want to hear it. <laughs> You're like, close all the doors. Um, yeah. Just leave me be. Right. Including the dogs. Like <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I'm uh, curious to see how after this residency, um, after having this, like, you know, this push, how I'm going to, you know, what's the next thing continuing? I'm still, it still makes me nervous. Like having that um, point where I reach a um, I don't know what to do now uh, because it's just so open define, you know, defining a path is, uh, you know, planning it out is uh, very important. Like once you get started, it's just that sometimes the fear of getting started, you're like, I don't know what to do next. And then if I don't ever get started, like I can just keep, you know, spinning on that fear cycle instead of. Yeah, I keep avoiding it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I think everybody does that to some degree until you finally like jump off and then just get started, right? It's just jumping off. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is easier said than done. Easier said than done, yeah, for yeah, sure. But, you know, it's, it's, I think it's comforting that it's something all of us artists have in common. We just have to be like, oh, okay, fine, I'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> all of us being entirely it's just so comforting to find when you find out that everybody else also doesn't know what they're doing that it's like <laughs> oh my god wow but um thank you so much for having this art talk with me I um definitely feel like I there's certain there's certain things that I want to do and there's you know I have certain goals and um I can't I can't reach them without, you know, the help and advice from, from people like you. And so I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk to me and, um, you know, just to, I, I love that I, now that I live in San Antonio, I get to just like encounter people, you know, you and people like you. And um, I get to meet so much more of the community that I'm, you know, that I want to be a part of uh, and that I want to contribute to um, with work. And yeah, I'm just really grateful. So, so thank you so much for talking to me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I wish you all the best of everything. You deserve all the good things, all the continued success, and to all the other artists out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad we got to do this. Me too. I'm glad. <laughs>